morning. Our opening hymn this morning is number 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Please rise and join us. Again, that's number 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship today. It's great to see uh, each and every one of you here. I uh, also want to welcome those that are worshiping with us on Facebook Live. We're grateful that you can be a part of this service. And I uh, want to remind you to check in with us in the comment section. Let us know how many folks in your home are worshiping. And uh, if you have prayer concerns or joys that you would like to share with us, uh, you can uh, list those uh, in that same comment section. Uh, I do have just uh, a few things I want to share in the way of announcements. Um, one is next Sunday uh, is our collection day uh, for uh, St. Paul's Food Pantry. Uh, you can bring non-perishable food items next Sunday. Just want to remind you uh, to do that uh, in support of the food pantry. Uh, appreciate your faithful support of that. Uh, also, uh, something we realized uh, in our Board of Stewards meeting on Tuesday night uh, is that uh, there are some people who are still not receiving emails uh, through our Shelby software here at church. Uh, we're not completely aware of how many people uh, are not receiving emails. Uh, if you think you are missing emails from us, uh, or maybe you have updated information, uh, if you would communicate with Samantha, uh, if you have a suspicion that you're missing things, uh, her email address is office at LathamUMC.org, or certainly you can always call the church uh, and let her know. Uh, we will work to get that straightened out to make sure uh, we are communicating with you uh, in the most effective way that we possibly can. So, uh, uh, or, and you share that with anybody if you think anybody else maybe is not receiving a communication from the church. Uh, anybody else have an announcement that you want to share? John? Okay. We'll, we'll pray for your mom, John. Well, I want to invite you to join with me in our opening prayer. It's uh, on the screen uh, and in your bulletin as well. Let's pray together. 
Give us, O Lord, steadfast hearts, which no unworthy thought can drag downward, unconquered hearts, which no tribulation can wear out, upright hearts, which no unworthy purpose may tempt aside. Bestow upon us also, O Lord our God, understanding to know you, diligence to seek you, wisdom to find you, and a faithfulness that may finally embrace you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. beautiful anthem. Thanks to uh, Eleanor and Tyler for uh, uh, that anthem and for the great job they do every week leading us in worship. Uh, As we get ready to pray today, uh, I have uh, a few names, uh, a few prayer concerns uh, that I want to share, Well, and a a joy as well. Uh, We've been praying for Sandy Ekstrom for several weeks uh, for her breast cancer diagnosis. She had her surgery last week and uh, got the pathology back uh, uh, at the end of the week. Surgery went well, uh, and the pathology report was clear that there's no other cancer. So let's give God thanks for that. Uh, also, uh, I want to share a few other things. Um, many of you, I'm sure, have already heard 
yesterday morning, early hours of yesterday morning, uh, Jane Leslie passed away. Um, haven't met with the family yet. I've talked with Missy, uh, the daughter. Uh, assume I'll be meeting with them tomorrow. As soon as we have the funeral arrangements uh, figured out, we will share those with the whole church. Uh, I'm sure it will be sometime this week. Uh, I just don't know which day yet. Uh, but please be in prayer for their family. Uh, also, uh, continue to pray for Jim Gillespie. Uh, Jim had to go to the ER one day this week, spent most of the day, didn't spend the night. Uh, trying to get his pain under control, uh, and that's been very difficult. Uh, so uh, Jim really needs our prayers, uh, as does Judy. So uh, please remember them. Uh, remember uh, Lauren and Justin Stiles and their family. Uh, all three of their children have had COVID all week. Uh, two of them have been pretty sick, uh, and uh, um, uh, they need our prayers. Uh, it's been a long, long week for their family. Uh, so uh, please remember the Stiles family. Uh, does anybody else have any prayer concerns or joys that you want to lift up before we pray? Well, let's go to the Lord. Uh, loving God, we give you thanks and praise for uh, this glorious day. Uh, we thank you for who you are. Uh, and, uh, Lord, we can't begin to thank you for all the ways that uh, you bless our life, uh, the abundance of your love and your grace and your mercy. Uh, and uh, as we worship you today, Lord, uh, we ask that your Holy Spirit would fill us, uh, you would fill this church, and Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would bring revival, uh, a revival that is uh, desperately needed uh, in uh, every church uh, and in the world around us. Uh, Lord, we know uh, from experience that you're always faithful to hear us when we pray, uh, and according to your will, you're faithful to answer. And uh, many names, many needs on our heart today, uh, and uh, many unspoken names. Uh, and you know all of them, Lord, and your grace is sufficient uh, for uh, every situation. Uh, we do pray, Lord, uh, for uh, the family of Jane Leslie, that you would bring comfort to them uh, as they mourn her loss. Uh, we thank you for Sandy's good news and uh, pray for her continued healing. And, uh, Father, we lift up Jim uh, especially uh, and ask, Lord, that you would give him peace. You would help him to deal with the pain that uh, he has been struggling with and uh, just surround him, surround Judy and their family uh, with uh, your loving and gracious presence, Lord. Uh, and now, Father, we join our voices <coughs> in praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we remain standing, Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, I invite you to join with me in uh, affirming our faith uh, through the Apostles' Creed. You can find the Creed on page 881 in your hymnals. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Apologies. I think that's the second time I've accidentally done that. 
Uh, go ahead and have a seat and take out your hymnals. For, uh, open up to number 480, O Love That Will Not Let Me Go. Again, that's number 480 in your hymnal. I believe that um, I shared with you when we first started the sermon series uh, that uh, I had a huge list of words that started with the letters R-E uh, when I was first thinking about uh, this series. I had over a, a thousand words that I had looked at, and I, I whittled that down uh, into four words for the sermon series. Uh, and uh, the first three, reset and refocus and revive, those came pretty easy. Uh, but uh, this word for the final sermon in the series, I sort of struggled with. Uh, and I guess that that's because I wanted this to be a, a culmination of uh, everything that uh, we had been talking about. I, I wanted the series to end in a way that hopefully made sense. Uh, and not just to me, but uh, made sense to everybody. Uh, and the word that I finally chose for today uh, is the word reflect. Uh, and I picked this word because it, it has two primary meanings. Uh, and I think they're both important. I think they're both related to uh, much of what we've been talking about. Uh, when we reflect on something, uh, that means that we consider it. It means that we ponder it. We think deeply about it. But reflect also means to give back an image, to mirror something. Uh, and we're going to spend a little time this morning uh, unpacking and uh, thinking about both of those ideas, both those meanings. Uh, one of the last classes that I took when uh, I was in seminary uh, was a class called Clinical Pastoral Education. Uh, and that's a mouthful. Uh, 
And to really tell you what that meant was I was working in the local church doing all kinds of real ministry activities. Uh, and once a week, I had to go to Louisville, Kentucky to a, a big church there, met with a, a small group of other students and the guy who was uh, our supervisor for this class. Uh, and when we got together, we would talk about really the, the details of some of our ministry experiences. We, we would have a, a debriefing about those things. Uh, and I really, really liked this guy who was my supervisor. Uh, he had been doing it a long time. He had a whole lot of wisdom, and he shared a, a lot of that wisdom as we went through this course. But he was also tough. Uh, he would challenge us about things that we had done, things that we had said. And sometimes we would have to defend not only our words, but our actions. Uh, and he forced us to think about how our background and our beliefs and our theology shaped the way that we did ministry. Now, this small group, there was maybe six or seven of us, uh, and we got to know each other really well over the course of that semester. And not just because we spent a lot of time together, uh, but maybe even more importantly, we had to bear our souls to each other. Uh, just about every single Monday. We had to be very transparent in this group. Uh, and it was a, a great experience. And I think one of the reasons why it was, one of the reasons why it was such a rich experience was because our small group was very diverse. Uh, there was a couple Baptists in there. There was a, a Presbyterian. There was a Lutheran. Uh, and then there was a, a few of us Methodists. Uh, but there was one guy in particular uh, in our group. His name was Jeff. And I, I'll never, ever forget this guy. Uh, he was a nice fella, uh, but what made him so memorable was he had lived a very colorful life. And I'm trying to say this in a nice way since we're in worship, but uh, uh, he told us all kinds of crazy stories about the life that he had lived. And uh, When we were in this class together, uh, he was working with a, a Baptist church in Louisville uh, doing urban ministry there. And his flock was basically made up of drug addicts and prostitutes uh, and homeless people. Uh, and he told us some amazing stories, some scary stories even about serving uh, that community there in Louisville. Sometimes when his life had been in danger uh, in the service that he was doing. Uh, but long before this guy had become a Baptist, uh, he had been a Buddhist for many years. Uh, and he had lots of funny stories about how he had made that transition from being a Buddhist to being a Baptist. <laughs> but one of the things I remember him sharing was how the practice of meditation, which had been a, a very important part of being a Buddhist, uh, he talked about how that really helped him in his prayer life when he became a Christian, when he became a Baptist. Uh, he was very disciplined in his practice of meditation. He, he got up every morning and, and he quietly reflected on God. Uh, and he reflected on his own life. And, and he said that really had helped him to grow in his faith. And, and maybe what struck me about this is he was telling us this story uh, was that spending time in quiet reflection was not my strong suit. Uh, maybe that's true for you as well. Uh, I think it's probably something that many followers of Christ are not wonderful at. Uh, a verse of Scripture that uh, uh, many of you, I'm sure, know is Psalm 46.10, uh, which says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Now, for some of us, uh, the only time that we are probably ever still is when we're laying in bed asleep. Uh, and other than that, our lives are pretty busy. They're pretty hectic. We're constantly trying to juggle our responsibilities. Uh, our responsibilities to our family and to work and uh, to church and all sorts of other responsibilities. Uh, and it probably feels like all we can do sometimes just to try and squeeze in a, a few minutes for reading a devotional, uh, spending some time in prayer as we're swallowing a cup of coffee in the morning. 
Uh, and if that's an apt description of your life, trust me when I say I understand. But you know, I have also found this to be true. That, that when something is really important to me, I, I can almost always figure out a way to make time for it. Maybe that's true for you. And when I make time to sit quietly with God, when I make time to reflect on Him and listen for His voice, it always makes a difference in my prayer life. And my prayer life always has a, a big impact on my day. And that quiet time, it, it not only gives us an opportunity to reflect on God, but it also gives us an opportunity to reflect on ourselves uh, and reflect on how we're living our life. Listen to what the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah said. This is Lamentations chapter 3, verse 40. Jeremiah said, let's take a good look at the way we're living and reorder our lives under God. Let's take a good look. Let's examine the way that we're living and reorder our lives under God. Now, for many of us, reflecting on ourselves is maybe more difficult than reflecting on God. And it's more difficult because it means we have to get honest with ourselves about who we are on the inside. We have to confront many of the thoughts running through our minds we have to deal with the, the feelings and the emotions that are down deep inside our hearts. I found that uh, reflecting is sort of like shining a light into our soul. And sometimes that light will uncover things about ourselves that maybe we've been trying to keep hidden. And the Holy Spirit is helpful in doing this. That the Holy Spirit helps us to find and recognize some of those hidden things, some of those broken places in our lives. But we have to be willing to sit still and listen. I believe that God wants those things to be brought out into the light. Because when we do that, those hidden things stop having the control over our life that they often do when they're hidden. God wants us to experience His grace. He wants to share His forgiveness with us. But it's hard for that to happen without some honest reflection. Uh, you might be familiar with this quote. Socrates once said that the unexamined life is not worth living. Now, I believe with those uh, very, very old words from Socrates, uh, but I also know from experience that real reflection can be painful, that the changes that come from that reflection can be hard. But I also believe that the transformation God wants to bring about in our lives is always worth the cost no matter what that cost is. And the abundant life that God in Christ offers us is better than any life that we could ever imagine. Now, I said to you in the beginning that uh, the other aspect of reflecting uh, that I want us to think about is uh, mirroring something, Re reflecting the image of something or someone and as followers of Christ, the image that we are supposed to reflect to the world around us is the image of Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul is emphasizing this to us. And Paul said, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. Now, when we think about our ability to do that, to, to reflect Christ to the world around us, you know, honestly, that's setting the bar very high. 
Uh, we know that Jesus was fully human, just like we are. But we also know that he was fully divine. During his life, he was tempted in every way, but he never sinned. He, he lived a perfect life. He, he was always faithful and obedient to the will of his heavenly Father. He always put the needs of others before his own. He loved us perfectly, and he laid his life down for us. Now, I don't know about your life, but my life looks a little different than that. And that's why I think it's hard for us to understand how our broken lives could ever be a, a real reflection of Christ to the world around us. But the truth is, our reflection is always going to be an imperfect reflection. And you know what? That's okay. That, that's what makes our reflection genuine. That, that's what makes our reflection real. And I actually think that's oftentimes the best way that we can reflect Christ. is through our weaknesses and through our brokenness. I think the light of Christ shines the brightest when it's shining through the weaknesses and the brokenness in our life. Now, Paul also said uh, in that passage from Ephesians 5 that the best way we can reflect Christ is with love. Uh, and that's basically what Jesus said to us in John chapter 13. Jesus said, let me give you a new command. Love one another. In the same way I loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize you are my disciples. When they see the love you have for one another. Now, Jesus didn't say in that passage that people will recognize you as his disciples when they hear us talking about love. He said that they would recognize us as his disciples when they see that love. When they see how we love each other. And if we're going to reflect Christ, then we have to reflect his love in real ways. It can't just be words. If we're going to reach new people in our community, they need to be able to see in tangible ways how we love each other, and how we love our neighbors. Now, I think it's absolutely true that the pandemic has made this more difficult. It's made it more challenging. But we can't allow a virus to become an excuse for not reflecting the love of Christ. Now, we just have to figure out new ways and creative ways to do that. I don't know how many of you are on Twitter. Um, it, it's a good platform. It's a great way to uh, get information from lots of different people. But uh, if you're on Twitter uh, and you don't follow Joe Martin, uh, you, you need to follow Joe. Uh, Joe posts all kinds of great stuff on Twitter. Uh, some of the things he posts will make you laugh out loud. Uh, but he posts lots and lots of stuff that's positive. It's very encouraging stuff. Uh, and a, a week or so ago, uh, he posted a, a video about a, a sheep farmer from Australia. And, and this sheep farmer had a, an aunt who had passed away. Uh, and because of the COVID restrictions there in Australia, he was not allowed to go to the funeral. And so he came up with a, a very creative way of feeding his sheep. Uh, and this creative way of feeding his sheep was a, a way to really show people how much he had loved his aunt. I want you to watch what he did.
I love that. Uh, I wish I was that creative. You know, there are all kinds of ways that we can show people we love them. There, there are all kinds of ways that we can help people outside of the church see our love for each other and our love for our neighbors. Now, if we're going to hit this reset button that uh, I talked about in the first week of this sermon series, if we're going to refocus our lives on Christ and invite the Holy Spirit to fill us and to bring revival, then I believe that we also have to be willing to spend some quiet time each day reflecting on God and reflecting also on how we're living our lives. And I hope that all the things that we've been talking about during this sermon series, that they would inspire us, they would encourage us to reflect the love of Christ to the world around us. Uh, And with all of that in mind, here is my challenge for you this week. It's a two-part challenge, just like last week was. Uh, During your daily prayer time, I want to ask you to uh, add one small thing to it. Uh, I want you to spend at least two minutes, at least two minutes every day uh, reflecting quietly on God uh, and also reflecting on how you're living your life. Now, don't fill those two minutes with any words. I, I want you to sit there and reflect and listen. And the second part of my challenge to you And this comes from uh, the the sheep farmer and uh, how inspired I felt when I watched that. Uh, As you go through your normal days this week, uh, I want you to look for opportunities to reflect the love of Christ to the world around us in, in real ways. Now, they may not be as elaborate as, you know, feeding thousands of sheep that that way and flying a drone over it to film it, but there's all kinds of small ways that we can share the love of Christ and reflect the love of Christ uh, to a a world that's desperate for that love. Uh, I pray with the Holy Spirit's help that we would be inspired and encouraged to do that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 147, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Again, that's number 147. Please rise as you are able and join us. Uh, We'll be singing number 147.
receive this benediction. Gracious God, as we go, we're grateful that uh, your Holy Spirit goes with us. Uh, I pray, Father, that we would have fruitful times of reflecting on who you are uh, and reflecting on how we're living our lives. Uh, And Lord, with your inspiration, with your encouragement, uh, I pray that we could all uh, reflect your love to the world around us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Have a blessed week.